Hi everyone, it's Jackie Schomburg Minen. So my kids are at a birthday party right now. I have a small window of time where all three of them are gone. So I am going to see what I can get done because everything in my brain is telling me right now I don't have enough time. But I know better because my brain is lying to me. So I'm going to see what I can get done in this chunk of time. And that's what this video is. So without further ado, I'm going to be working on six panels. I'm going to start with them all pushed together as if they're one big panel. And then after a while, I'll separate them and see if I can get six paintings out of this. Wish me luck. All right, so here we go. These are six kind of budget panels. They're not cradled. They just have that cut out in the back to hang on a nail, but they do the trick and they're great for just doing projects and not spending tons of money. So these are six by six squares. I've taped them together with packing tape just to keep them so I can pretend that it's one panel. I used my fluorescent red, just brayering it on there, and some alizarin crimson on top. Using some white with my color shaper, and if it looks like a mess, it is a mess. <laughs> That's kind of the point at right now. I'm just trying to get some coverage on this is a Neocolor crayon. This is my hair dryer. <laughs> um, my goal is really just to get coverage on here. I'm not trying to make anything look particularly pretty. Working with different colors, trying to get things moving. So this is Celadon Green or Titan Green Pale, which is I, which is just a Celadon Green color. And even though I am aware of the cracks between the panels, I'm pretending that I'm not. Now I'm mixing up and some just trying to green, make some interesting that same Titan shapes green pale and marks and patterns with some phthalo turquoise on this as a whole panel. Something in the same color family, but just more blue to get something similar but different. Now I did dry all of the Celadon for a while with my hair dryer before this because it was on a little bit thick. Using a palette knife to apply this turquoise infused green. I have no plan. I'm just winging it, playing around. I knew that at the end I didn't want to have a ton of the red showing, but I wanted it to be little secret pops here and there. So I'm trying to fill up more of the square with the blues and greens. Now that I've made this big mess, I'm going to add some creamy white, try to clean things up a bit. I was dusting off some of the paint that I carved into because it made little marks everywhere. So I'm applying it. I tried with a foam brush and hated it. So I changed to my smaller color shaper and I'm just carving in with a wooden skewer. So as I started doing this, this is when I had my, uh, I have it every time I do something like this, but I, I have my oh boy moment. Like what have I done? <laughs> what am I doing? I can't turn back now, I better just keep going. Doing some tally marks. So I was not loving this minimal coverage on the white and I didn't really mean to cover up everything that I covered up. But again, I did because I wasn't planning 
I just did it and thought, oh boy, that's a lot of white. Taking some of the white off with a piece of paper, pieces of paper. I know I have a wipe that's wet and I'm just trying to get any of the white that's not dry already just to get down a bit farther into that layer, wipe some of it away. All right, now I've gotten uh, a credit card out. It's actually a Blick gift card that is covered in paint. Because I wanted to have a thicker coat of white, but I wanted to have more control over where it went. And just, I like the shape that it makes when it, um, when the credit card pulls the paint across, it's more of a line. The palette knife is more, you know, it just kind of hugs the top bumps of the panel. So now I'm starting to see the shapes just a little bit, I'm starting to see that the white looks better when it's not so patchy. This is Sun Gold from Nova Color Paints. Oh, you know what? It's not. I got out the Sun Gold and I tricked myself. Then I decided I would add some yellow ochre first. This is actually yellow ochre. Sprayed some water on it to get those little dots. I liked warming up the panels with this color. All right, now I'm using the sun gold on top of the yellow ochre. And you can see it's becoming more metallic now. It blends really well with the yellow ochre, which is also from Nova Color Paints. It just makes it a more dimensional. I'm just using a pencil to scribble some words that are unreadable. I was at the Art Institute um, with my friend Paul, shout out to Paul, last weekend, and we saw some Cy Twombly paintings, some giant ones, and I was very inspired by that, so that was my little homage to, <laughs> to him writing with pencil inside there. All right, now this is a beautiful oops because I was looking to see if I wanted to add that green tissue paper but the corner dipped into the turquoise on my palette and then I accidentally dragged it across my painting on the bottom right. So I doubled down and just got more paint on it and dragged it across all the other ones. Spreading it around with my brayer, which kind of had a fun effect. I wasn't sure at that point that I wanted the phthalo turquoise full strength, but it's just what happened. The phthalo turquoise wanted me, so I honored that. This is some of the tissue paper. For those of you who've been watching my videos for a while, I have a botanical, what did I call it? I don't know. It was a jelly print, uh, video and this is what I used some tall grasses in the jelly print print to make that geometric shape the crossing of the leaves so I decided I'd cut this out and see what I could make
again, I had no plan. Um, just looking for something fun, something different, something weird. Bingo. <laughs> the good thing about these tissue paper collage pieces is that they're very bold and they're kind of taking focus off of all of the very soft edged background. The thing I didn't like about them so much is that they weren't very opaque because it was kind of a second print on the jelly plate but it's still cool because then it lets some of the background through definitely adds more busyness to some extent because of the lines but I really like how it lets the color show through from behind When in doubt, add something different. So, wasn't sure where to go with the backgrounds that I had made so far, and this is definitely different. So I'm at least following my own advice this time. The upper right corner was my favorite right here. I really liked the balance that was happening. I liked that squiggle at the top from the Neo Color crayons. Most of my other squiggles got covered up in the other panels. That one survived. So now I've got something on each of the panels from that one tissue paper collage print. And I'm going to add some more white. I'm using a brayer. I, I like applying things with a brayer sometimes because it uh, everything softens. The edges soften. So it's not so, I don't know, it's not like a crisp edge. Now in the upper middle and the upper left, I did not like how soft it was. <laughs> it was a little too soft for me. And I was just using a little bit of paint that I had left over. So going back now with more paint on the brayer. And I do like how this, even though the black still has harder edges, this does soften it a bit. Now it feels like those black pieces are in a cloud. And now I'm coming in with a glaze of quinacridone gold. So this is really warming things up. And I can be more intentional here about right now I'm editing. So now I'm deciding where I want to have color, where I don't want to have color, where I want a little, where I want a lot. And you can see that a lot of what I do with glazing is adding some and then taking it away. So I add some and then I pull out the, um, pull the white out, <laughs> is that a saying? I wipe it away, though which brings the white out. That's the word I'm looking for. All right, now this I got out some Payne's Gray, which is kind of a navy blue. And it didn't do a whole lot for me. That's some more Payne's Gray. All right, grab some more collage. I wanted to have something dark, dark. 
because the black pieces were light black. Is that a thing? It wasn't as satisfying to me to have something very, very black. So this paper is just black. It's totally opaque. Can't see through it. Just black. I did cut out some words as well. The word on that little peach piece on the upper middle says everything and I put it upside down. The move word right there, when it, before I cut it in half, it was just like totally overpowering the panel because you could read what it said and it just said move. So I cut it in half to take some of the focus off of that. When you can't read what the letters are, they are a little less in your face or a lot less in your face and just become interesting shapes at a certain point rather than giant words telling you what to do. Some of you may think I went a little overboard with some of the pieces I'm adding here. And some of you may be right on that. <laughs> I still haven't decided. But I needed something. And this is what I did. And it was something. Which means it wasn't wrong. I love it when I find a good shape that lines up with the paint that's already on my panel. I really like that upper left, how it just looks kind of like a hilly horizon line. And the upper right is still my favorite so far. Even though I love all my panels equally, <laughs> just like my children, the upper right was uh, I really liked what was happening there. So these are definitely, well, to me, they feel tamer than my usual panels, but I really liked the calm areas and kind of the dreamy feel of some of the cloudy, foggy whiteness. I'm still so pleased that I got something done in my, my block of time. So when you have those moments, just like I did, when I kept my, you know, my intellectual mind was like, I bet I can get something done during this time. And my whatever other brain, ADHD brain, I don't know, artist brain was like, oh, it's probably not enough time, don't do anything. <laughs> Just scroll Facebook. I'm so glad I ignored it. Because now I have six new panels that I can continue to add to if I choose. Keep playing with. I think the one on the upper right, after this, you know, at the end of this video, you'll be able to see. I think that one's done. But you can let me know what you think. And I would love to know if you struggle with that feeling of, I have some time, I could make some art, and then you kind of talk yourself out of it. Like, oh, I probably don't have enough time, I shouldn't even start. I don't know. Do you guys ever get like that? I would love to hear about it in the comments. If you have a way that you get yourself out of it, I'd love to hear that too. I'm sure others would love to see that too. But just let me know in the comments um, if you get that feeling of 
I want to do art. I have some time. Uh, it's probably not enough time. And you talk yourself out of it. I'm just taking a black brush. It's a dry black brush. A little bit of black paint. Darkening in some of those areas that are not quite as dark as I wanted. And then using the brush just to get like a dusting of black around some of the white edges and colored edges so that the black doesn't look as crisp against the other colors. So that's my favorite. Um, I'm pretty pleased with how these turned out given that I didn't have a ton of time and I still got six panels made. So let me know what you think. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I put new videos out every Sunday. Thanks everyone.